On this episode of UTR, we find Frankfurt for some mammals you'll want to meet. We'll also show you a cloud with an amber lining and a company that sends Michigan fruit far and wide. Then we drive to Dexter for terrific trails, some intercontinental confections, and a barbecue that brings back the Old West. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan a great place to be. Support for Under the Radar provided by the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, dedicated to shared economic success. MEDC promotes the state's assets and opportunities that support business investment, job growth, and community vitality. Along the way is where we find the unexpected. Along the way is where we take in the scenery, and often where we have the most fun. Sure, along the way can be the place we stop to fill up or grab a bite to eat. But in Michigan, along the way becomes the place we've been longing for. Because enjoying the journey is always pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar Michigan. What do you call an awesome resort town that's on a beautiful little lake, right on the shores of Lake Michigan, and in one of the prettiest parts of the state? Well, I don't know what you call it, but I call it Frankfurt. Frankfurt is one of the coolest places in Michigan to get sand between your toes. The town backs right up to beautiful Betsy Lake, and its left shoulder is on the shores of Lake Michigan, offering one of the best beaches for sunbathing on the entire planet. I've been coming here since I was a kid, and I'm not kidding when I say that it's one of the coolest places to live, work, play, or stay in the lower 48. Now don't worry, <laughs> I know what you're wondering. If you live in Frankfurt, does that make you a Frankfurter? Frankfurt is located in Northwest Lower Michigan, right where you, the lake, and the shore should meet. Now if you wanna make great television that's fun for the whole family, you can't go wrong with animals especially when they're cute, furry, and frequently frequent Frankfurt. Now, if you're wondering what the heck these exotic animals are, they're the elusive alpaca. Well, actually, they're pretty common in this neck of the woods thanks to the Crystal Lake Alpaca Farm. And speaking of necks, these awesome animals appear to have ample. Chris Nelson is the Pied Piper of alpacas in these parts. Well, first of all, what exactly are alpacas? Hi. Alpacas, Hi. I call them enchanting. They're part of the camelid family. Oh, like a camel or a... Um, they're yeah, yeah. Right. So they're part of the camelid family, but they're a crossbreed between vicuñas right. and llamas. And oh. um, the Incas actually created them by crossbreeding those animals about 6,000 years ago. Wait, don't tell me. Incas, that's South America. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Peru, so Bolivia, Chile. Yes. Well, how did you get into raising, and how long have you been doing it? We've been doing it for about 15 years now, and if you read the sign out on the fence that yeah. says, caution, <laughs> they will steal your heart, and they do. And we went to our very first farm and just fell in love. They do have the softest, is it yes. fur, or what do you call it? Yes, it's fur, fiber, yes. And it is the softest fiber and, known to man. And you also can make clothing mm -hmm. like it's like wool, only it's better than wool? It actually is better than wool. It's hypoallergenic, and uh, it is actually the warmest, softest, and strongest fiber known to man. You know, I just met you, and I love you. <laughs> Hi. Now, they don't have, That's they only have teeth, on, they only have teeth on the bottom? And the front, they only have teeth on the bottom, and the back they have uppers and lowers. So oh, when they amazing. go out into the pasture and eat the grass, they only nibble the tops of the grass. They won't rip it out like a horse or a goat does. They only nibble off the tops of the grass blades, and their feet are padded like a dog. They have two toenails, but their feet are padded, so when they walk on Mother Earth, they do it very gently, so they're also called the green animal. You show these as well. There's we do. We take them to shows across the U.S., and we were actually named the 2013, 14, and 15 Small Breeder of the Year in the United States. Congratulations. Now we're, thank you. Now we're considered medium. We have more females. Um, 
But yes, we do show them. It's all about their fiber and their conformation at the shows. Now, can regular people, like if I wanted to go have an alpaca, are there re rules and regulations? Can anybody go buy one? Anybody can. You want to be prepared before you do get alpacas. You want to have a barn and, right. and good fencing. And, and the more prepared you are right. before starting a farm, the better. Now, tell me about the boutique here. Your son yes. actually got it an old barn that was mm -hmm. on this property and, you've got, and you actually sell alpaca products in there wow. yes and people can stop by here and just see the alpacas Absolutely. if they want to see them oh that's awesome i'll come back yes. and see you guys i'll miss you while i'm gone we're out of food they are <laughs> they don't they don't miss <laughs> they me <know>. now <laughs> these gentle animals really are fun to be around and their fur feels fantastic if you want a close encounter with one of the cutest creatures ever to stomp the earth take a trip to the Crystal Lake Alpaca Farm in Frankfurt. You just might find your new furry best friend. I did. You know, even though it's a perfectly sunny day here in Frankfurt, looks like there's a storm brewing. But don't grab your umbrella, grab your mug. Because at Storm Cloud Brewing Company right here on Main Street, it's all about the beer. Well, actually, if you talk to Rick Schmidt, You'll find out it's about that and a whole lot more. Now, before we even get to your beer, and trust me, we will get to your beer, what is it you love about this town so much? You know, that's a great question. I, um, I grew up in Colorado, uh, met my wife uh, in school there. She summered in northern Michigan. I'd never been here before. I came here and just, you know, it's God's country. Um, yeah, to be able to live and work and be a part of a community in northern Michigan is so special. And, and Frankfurt is, uh, is my home, and it's just, it's a goosebump kind of thing, what, what's happened here. Well, speaking of being a part of the community, I mean, you're doing a lot for the town. You even restored the theater next door to the yeah, brewery? Yeah, we did, yeah. yeah it's, and not just me, you know, I, I get to be the face of the theater, but... This theater was uh, was closed and was uh, going to be demolished and turned into condos, and and my wife and I and another couple found out about that, and somebody just had to do something about it. And it's just a really special thing that's happened in Frankfurt uh, for the entire group of uh, of the investors and the community itself. Okay, now I promised you we'd get to your beer, and it's that time. Um, what made you decide to open a brewery? <laughs> Besides, you love beer. Yeah, yeah, right. Well. Because, yeah. And by the way, where's all your tattoos? You're supposed to have a bunch yeah, of tattoos yeah. and a beard. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm probably not the prototype of a, of a brewery owner. Uh, my business partner, Brian, who's the brewer, uh, approached me about a business plan to open a brewery next to the theater. Yeah. And he just wanted me to look at the plan. And so I looked at the plan, and, and he kept looking at it. And then he'd evaluate it. And, you know, can okay, you get to a little hurdle, and you jump over that. And, I asked him if I could be part of it. And, um, Did you do this over a couple of beers? Well, there was always beer involved. But yeah, that's right, uh, yeah, which is appropriate in our line of work, right? But you know, we just one of those things where you have an idea, and you keep working it, and you have a plan, and you keep working it, and lo and behold, you just got to push your chips to the center of the table. And for us, about investing in town was important. Uh, creating jobs is important. We issued 75 paychecks on Friday. Uh, and so we continue to grow and we continue to bring people into Frankfurt that have never been here before. Uh, and so for, for me personally, it was an entrepreneurial uh, opportunity. It was never my dream to, to do this uh, in this industry. But boy, has it been fun uh, ever since we started and we're continuing to expand and we look forward to the future and, uh, and, and, uh, and growing Stormcloud as a result. What kind of beer do you guys, is it, is it mostly uh, Belgian style? You know, our niche uh, and our differentiation is that we brew Belgian-inspired ales. And it, it's just different, because there's no really, nobody's doing it in northern Michigan. And we are looking forward to uh, sharing our beer outside of Benzie County in the next year. And so maybe you'll see it on the shelf uh, uh, in the upcoming uh, months uh, downstate. Or in my fridge. Yeah, good. <laughs> This is a place where the entire community can congregate, connect, kick back, and enjoy a frosty brew. They say that every cloud has a silver lining. Well, here at Storm Cloud Brewing Company, the lining is a beautiful amber gold, and I'll totally drink to that. You ever wonder what a day in the life of a Michigan cherry is like? It's probably pretty predictable. You're on a tree, then you get picked off, then you end up in a pie or maybe some jam or jelly. Ah, unless you get gathered by Graceland. Then, get ready to see the world. And that's because since 1973, 
Graceland Fruit has been drying Michigan's best and sharing it with the entire planet. They pretty much perfected the process, so no matter the month, you can munch on a mouthful of your favorite fruit. Al DeVore is the CEO here at Graceland, so he's just the guy to get us going. Now, back in the olden days, how did they actually start drying fruit here? Because I know the process has changed. Actually, uh, this process is relatively new when you think of food. Yeah. Uh, dried fruit's been around since antiquity. I mean, you know, figs and dates. But cherries, blueberries, apples, they don't have enough natural sugar. So the process to put something into the fruit so that you could then dry it down and make it food safe. It's only been around for about 30 years. Oh, because they used to just, didn't they used to just in the olden days pack them in sugar? They used to pack it and freeze it in sugar. But then you'd pull it out and thaw it. You better do something with it pretty quick. This way it can sit on a shelf for up to two years. It's still food safe. I've been going to Frankfurt for years. had no idea that this little company here is ship. You guys are shipping uh, dried fruits around the world. The last count, I think it's 56 countries this product goes to around the world. Really? It's probably better known outside of the United States by its brand than it is inside the U.S. Now, you guys, you process fruits to go into other people's products, right? That's the primary business that we're in. We're in uh, what you call an industrial ingredient. I know it doesn't sound real sexy or, or edible, but it's an industrial ingredient. We go into somebody bigger puts us in their muesli, they put us in a bar, they put us in a cereal or they bake us into a cake. But now you guys have come out with your own line of dried fruits. That's right. We started about three years ago. We, we sat down and we said, we got to do something uh, to get some brand recognition. Okay, everybody knows us in the industry, but very few people know about us. So we started building our own brand and, and now we're on store shelves in quite a few stores, about 1,500 stores around the country right now. On a personal level, what does it feel like being the fruit-filled ambassador for Michigan fruit? Well, I don't know that I've ever accepted that, that <laughs> prestigious, uh, you know, auspicious title, but it's, it's neat it, because um, I think Michigan doesn't realize we, we don't fully appreciate just what an impact we have on, on the food industry worldwide or the fruit-growing community. We're a very diverse economy in terms of the agricultural products that we produce. And uh, it's nice to be in a U.S. pavilion in an overseas food show and have people come look for the Michigan specialty crops because we are so diverse. Plus, wait till you get my order. We will definitely be uh, on high alert watching for that order to come in. I've been eating dried fruit for years. I just didn't realize so much of it came from right here in our own backyard. So the next time you enjoy some dried fruity goodness, just hold up your right palm and look up near the end of your little finger. Because that's where Graceland is, and that's probably where it came from. And next time you're looking to make some classic Michigan memories, hop in the car and find Frankfurt. And in no time at all, you'll be a Frankfurter just like me. Oh yeah. Hey there, aquatic adventure seekers. I'm paddling down the Huron River Water Trail. It's a 104-mile-long river trail through southeast Michigan that connects tons of cool towns. I call it trickle-down transportation. And what town are we heading to right now? Well, dare I say, Dexter. Oh, land ho! Oh, gosh. Dexter is a tiny town that's got a big, beautiful personality. The downtown is absolutely awesome, the food scene is fit for a city twice its size, and the people here are some of the friendliest you'll encounter in the entire contiguous. It's the kind of place you can go spend a day and then never want to go away. Dexter is located in southeast lower Michigan, just a handful of miles northwest of Ann Arbor. Another thing that makes Dexter so desirable is the beautiful job they've done restoring and developing their riverfront. Not only did Paul Cousins play a huge role in making it all happen, he also helped me get out of my kayak. How did this beautiful little Riverside Park happen? Well, the, there was a dam, and um, it, when, the, when, you, when you looked behind the dam, 
silt had filled in, all the vegetation had filled in. Uh, it was really, really uh, unusual and, and inaccessible for anybody to use. So we thought if we could take the dam out, we could create then not only a free-flowing river, which is grid, that's better than one that's dammed up, but also it would make something that would be, and then the trail system, of course, went right along with it, right side by side with it, and that's how it came about. So many communities do have access to water, but they don't utilize it like you guys have, and they don't realize that it really creates a sense of place. Well, it, it, that, that's worked with a lot of people. It wasn't just me, it was a lot of people with that foresight and working together to have this done. It, it worked out really, really well when we started putting it all together. And then people see this and they come here for all of that. Just to walk along this river walk here, it lowers your blood pressure, <laughs> it heightens your spirit. Right and it just makes you proud to be a part of this community. The end result was we felt was gonna be worthwhile and it's exactly what happened to us. Well, with awesome thoughts of Dexter dancing in my head, I headed off to explore more. And you know me, it wasn't long before my sweet tooth detected something deliciously decadent. Let me ask you something, do you like chocolate? I mean, do you really like chocolate? No, you don't understand. Do you really like chocolate? Well, if you like it like I like it, you'll like meeting Mindo Chocolates. It's a business that went from Dexter to South America and back again. Now they're doing a delicious intercontinental dance to keep us all doused in this delectable delight. Barbara Wilson is the continent hopping cocoa connoisseur who turned chocolate into a wonderful way of life. Your story is so fascinating, I don't even know where to start with you. I understand you were a smuggler, though, that used to actually smuggle chocolate into <laughs> South America and make really good brownies, which yes. is, that's suspicious in and of itself. <laughs> but how did all this start? Uh, well, what's, uh, in 2008, we built a little house to go live in in Ecuador. And um, we decided to make a little internet cafe and we made, started making brownies. But I was never really happy with the chocolate I was finding. At that time, you were actually coming back to the United States and getting really good chocolate and taking it back down there. Yes, but it still wasn't as good as I knew. I didn't even know how good chocolate could be in, at that point. So we went to a cooperative, Cayardi, and we, and we bought some beans and we made chocolate for the first time and it was just so much better than any chocolate I had ever tasted. Even your first batch? The first batch. It was just roasted and ground. And then we started making the brownies with that. And we still, seven years, eight years later, make it the same way with just the ground cocoa mass. But you have a place down there where you make the chocolate, and then you also have a place up here where you make chocolate. And you do classes, mm -hmm. and what else do you do? Um, here we're doing a few tours, and then we do a lot of classes. We, do, we go out and do a lot of events. And then we make chocolate bars, of course, and we sell them at a lot of stores now. We're all over uh, Michigan, and, and we have a distributor that's in the whole country too. Well enough talking about this taste tempting treat, it's time for me to try my hand at it with fourth degree chocolatier Anna McWilliams. So now we're going to belly up to some chocolate bars. Correct. Okay. How big are these bars going to be? Um, they're going to be 50 grams a piece. Oh, so I get seven of them? Yes, that's the right answer. Okay. Okay, so what do you what do you Um so you use this cookie scoop and just scoop them right into the mold. Seriously? It's yeah. that simple? Yep. That's the just like this? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then um, you use that little spatula to smooth it out. Do I need this thing? Yep. Or I mean, it's easier that way, I think. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> this is I'm, this is going to be this is going to take too long with me. Do here, you do it. I'll watch you and I'll Oops. cheer you on. All right. Go. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> here, in case if you if you drip any, I'll take. I'm, I'm assuming that's what this is. Oh yeah. Yep. How'd you get so much in that scoop? Magic again. <laughs> So do you use this to... Uh... To smooth it out, yeah. So I'll have you do that in just a second. Oops. There we go. Look at that. It's almost, like, it's almost like you told me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so now, when, once you make the bars like this, mm -hmm. then how long does it take for them to set and for me to eat them? Um, so we'll pop them in the fridge, and it takes you know probably 10 minutes maximum for that. But... We have some that you can unmold right now. Ooh, TV magic. Give it a taste. Can I really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. It's kind of, it, it's like a little bit, you know, slightly bitter at first, but then you get the sugar at the end. Right, and the consistency is really nice. Mm -hmm. It's like... Stone ground. Oh, this is incredible. Oh my goodness, what is that? <laughs> 
If you consider chocolate to be more of a passionate pursuit than a pleasure, make your way to Mindo Chocolate Makers in Dexter. They'll make you a top-notch chocolatier in no time at all. That is, if you can stop eating the stuff long enough to learn something. Mmm, chocolate. Now, if you like cowboys, barbecue, and chuck wagon style cooking, poster your pistol, partner, because we got some chowing to do. <laughs> Which one's my trigger finger? This one? This one. Well, get ready for a heap and help and a hospitality. Because <clears throat> at Hotel Hickman Chuck Wagon Barbecue, it's all about bringing the Old West into the new millennium. And that includes some brazen barbecue and a selection of savory sides. Scott Thomas is the proud proprietor at Hotel Hickman. And if you come hungry, he'll make sure you leave happy and heavy. I heard you won this place either in a gunfight or a cook-off, which is true. It was a card game. Oh, it was a card a game? A card game, <laughs> yes. Now, I also heard that way back in the 1900s, you were doing cowboy reenactments? Well, it was 1999. 1999? Yep, we, uh, we had a, a team of mules in a covered wagon, and we were doing um, cowboy reenactment. And we were over to Domino's Farms. Uh, we had our encampment set up. I drove my team of mules over there, and uh, my buddy Angelo and I were just sitting there in an encampment cooking lunch over a fire. And someone asked us if we could cook for uh, a birthday party. So looked at Angelo. He's sure. So we took the wagon, went and cooked for a birthday party. At the birthday party, got hired to do a wedding. And then we started getting busy one week in out of the month doing events, cooking for people. And then it got busier. And now it's just shy of out of control. Well, you and the guys here all seem like authentic cowboys to me. But, you know, I'm a city slicker. But... I mean, it doesn't, like, it doesn't seem like an act. Well, I have kids ask me if I'm a real cowboy. I say I used to raise longhorns like Big Daddy Duke there. I can uh, hitch a team of mules and drive a wagon, so I'm as close as I'll ever be. <laughs> well, what exactly is authentic chuck wagon cooking? Well, chuck wagon cooking is cooking with cast iron over open fires. So we've kind of combined the chuck wagon cooking over the open fires with barbecue and came up with this idea. and. It's a winning combination. It's a, it's a working. Yes, it's working fine for us. Well, I understand the gentleman I need to see to get me some barbecue and maybe a sarsaparilla is Big Ed. Big Ed. We can go out to the smoker and see Big Ed, and he'll usually charge you five dollars for a tour to smokers, but I'm sure we can we could have him waive that five bucks today. Where's Jim? I need the five bucks. This place is all about big, big flavors, big helpings, big characters. Big smokers, and that's right, Big Ed. Howdy there, young fella. What are you doing here? Well, actually, Scott said if I wanted any barbecue, I'd either arm wrestle you or dress like a real cowboy, and I saw you. You're Big Ed, right? Yes, sir. So I figured I better just dress up. You're just fine. Yeah, thanks. So what are you barbecuing in here? I've got some brisket. i got some pork cushions. Really? Can I see them? Absolutely. Yeah. Can I have at it? Yeah, I'll do it. Out of my way, young fella. There okay. You, you want me to get that for you? Yes, Big Ed. All right, here we go. One hand. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Look at that. Now, what are these right here? These are all land mammals, correct? <laughs> this is pork cushions. This is for our pulled pork. Oh, that's awesome. And these are our briskets. Now, are you are you barbecuing any of the animal I'm wearing right now? Probably that. You probably are. <laughs> What's the secret to good barbecue? Low and slow. Low and slow. Low and slow. Keep it moist. Right. Watch your temps, not too hot. So we'll hit this at about two and a quarter or so for 14 hours. How long have you been BBQing? That's oh, cowboy talk for barbecue. Yeah, a, a few years now. You gonna cut me off a slab? Yes, sir. Well, far be it from this authentic cowboy to turn down some authentic barbecue. And boy, they brought out enough for the whole posse. And our horses, too. So if you want to heap and help into some tasty, meaty treats, just head on down to Hotel Hickman Chuck Wagon Style Barbecue. Don't take it from me, though. Just take it from the horse's mouth. See? <laughs> Just look at all these happy folks chowing down on this bona fide barbecue. Makes you feel good all over, don't it? Hey there. Want to know more about all the great places we go on the program? 
just go to our website. You can watch episodes, tell us where to go, jump to our Facebook page, and even buy a hat like mine. So just go to utrmichigan.com. That's utrmichigan.com. Go now. Or now. Support for Under the Radar provided by the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, dedicated to shared economic success. MEDC promotes the state's assets and opportunities that support business investment, job growth, and community vitality. It's human nature to plan ahead, but sometimes our best ideas come when there's no plan at all. When we just go with the flow and let the day unfold as it was meant to be. A day on the water, soaking up the sun. A day we leave up in the air. Yesterday, this was just a last minute idea. Today, our big surprise is pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org.